You're a family man now, Mike. When I met you, it was before Shauna. Uh, when you met me, I certainly was like on the tail end of my, my divorce. This is like 10, 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, we've both gone through a number of changes. And, and one of the things, obviously, big deal, big change, kids. But I, I remember very specifically something that we both read on the OG back in the day was that uh, don't be afraid if you don't bond with your kids right away. If as a father, that kid comes out and you look at it, if you don't be alarmed if you're not met with overwhelming joy or a deep, you know, immutable connection. Um, how did that play out for you? Did, did you have a similar experience where it, it grows over time? Uh, your connection as a father with your children. Uh, how did you find that to be personally relevant? Oh, when you, yeah. So there's all this issue that, you know, when the first time I held my kid, I felt my life purpose all molded into one. And I was, I had my life purpose sort of sorted out by then. So I remember the first time I held Syra, and she recognized my voice because I talked to her a lot when she was in the womb and it felt great, but I didn't have this cascade of emotion where I'm weeping. Now I really know what life is all about. In a way I had um, a strange feeling where Shauna took a picture of it because people don't realize this, how, how surreal it is for everyone, even though so many people have had children for you, it's your first time you go in, you have the kid. We, we did a midwifery. You put your kid in the car seat and you go home and now you have a kid. <laughs> what? So there's a picture of me where I have an oh shit look on my face and the, I look over. Oh, cause my life was good. Then my life was dialed in on every kind of level. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what did I just do to my life? Was this a good choice or not? I'm in now, though, whatever it is I'm in for. And that was my feeling like, OK, whew, did I just blow up my life? What did I just do? But of course, as they get older, especially after nine months, it blows your mind how it's possible to love someone as much. It blows your mind how interesting, little, unique creatures we all start off as before whatever happens to our minds, you know, ruins us for a while. It becomes incredible where now I don't like it. You, you people, you want to travel? I don't know. Can I take my kids? I don't even want to be, I don't even want to be away from my kids anymore. But, but that definitely, it opens up. So I was, I, I felt a sense of like, this is really cool when I held her and she recognized my voice. And then I went through the, oh man, did I just blow up my entire life? And then as they get older, because a mom's bond is always going to be stronger. They're breastfeeding. The child was just in their womb. And with the dad, there's really not that much. I always tell people, what's my advice for a new father? Be there for the mom. There's really not that much you can do for the kid. There really isn't. You're, unless you're feeding formula or something like that, there's not that much you can do. You have to try to, to make the mom's life a little bit easier because she's got to get up twice at night, sometimes three times at night. She might not get more than four hours of sleep for a year so she's gonna like be maybe lash out at you a little bit doesn't mean you don't draw boundaries but it does mean you have to have a, an emotional awareness of where that's coming from how would you react mr man if you hadn't slept for more than four hours in a year probably you would be lashing out a little bit too and then you don't feed into that then you don't take it personally you can't believe that now you're fighting that's what happens to people is you you feed into that energy, which is your choice, and then you make it worse. And now they have this spiral when really you're you're just dealing with a sleep deprived person who has been getting up three times every night for for however long. So the biggest thing, yeah, is you can do is be there. And then as you get older, you, you know, like I would take Sarah for hikes and carry her and everything else. It got great. Mike, help your wife. That does it sound like alpha male? Beta, it's beta, right? Super yeah, beta. beta. Yeah. <laughs> people people fail to understand what leadership is really all about it's about setting a mission getting your team on board with the mission and then figuring out a way to be the most use and help to the teammates on the mission in achieving the mission what is your highest and best use at this time period when it's three o'clock in the morning and you've got a two week old and she's crying and the mom's there what what is the best thing that you can do is it to be all an alpha 
<laughs> cold, emotionless, not going to stoop to help. No, you do whatever it takes to help your teammate, especially yeah, one who's like on the DL. From. What? Yeah, but, but that kind of feedback is always coming from the, the guys who are on Instagram all day critiquing your outfits or whatever. <laughs> that's not real. That's not real male energy at all. That That's like a child. I get that all the time too. It's like you're a child trying to tell me something about life. But, you know, I don't I don't really care. I'm not remotely interested. But yeah, they'll be like, oh, because you see it all the time. Like, oh, you have people be like one eye is this, one eye is that. And these are people, by the way, they're not, which is, again, why it's helpful to have lived phases of life. Just like I know that if me of these guys who talk all this shit wanted to go out, I know how the night would end them versus me. So, so much of that is tuning out. The children, they're, they're children. And we were probably children when we were men in our 20s too. We were probably children. We all, we mature a lot later in life. So for me, oh, you help your wife or you do the dishes or something. I'm, I just kind of like roll my eyes like, okay, dude, I don't know who you are. I don't care what you have to say. You can go have fun on, on some internet pornography channel. I'm just not, not don't <laughs> care, don't care. There's definitely a dad circuitry that kicks in. I think it's probably parental circuitry where when you, before the kids, you're like, man, I, I just, how could I, my, it's not going to fit in my life. It's not going to fit with my goals, my wants, my wishes, my desires and whatever. And then the babies come and then they get a little bit older and then just all of your priorities change, your perspective on things change. Can you, can you just reassure some of the trepidatious guys out there that like the whole thing changes? So like it's impossible to project your your mindset from your twenties into you being a, a dad and like having it relate. Well, in a way, I can't because if they have the trepidation or fear, then uh, that's how I live my entire life with trepidation and fear and confronting my fears and, and jumping in. That that's part of the the mindset work is yeah your life's going to change. Flip side though is. You don't know what your life – because that's the idea. Is people think that they know what their life would be life, like if A didn't happen. <laughs> well, I know, you know, oh, if I have kids, that my life is going to change. Well, I don't know. Maybe you would have gotten a car crash because you would have done something reckless. Because you're a 40-year-old guy, you would live a very reckless life. Maybe you would get caught up in some kind of bad situation. Your life could be fundamentally worse. But everybody has an idealized version of, you know, this is what would have happened. This is what's going to happen. When really you don't know, like you don't know what life is going to do. Yeah. Shauna just texted me that she's watching. So she has texted me the picture of me and my, like, she zoomed in on it here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can show it <laughs> on the camera. We'll see if it works. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm just like a space case. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. So I have a kid now. All, All right. right. Whew. Did I just nuke my own life? And that's fine. It's just, it's a new challenge. It's fulfilling. It's rewarding. But the flip side is I don't pressure people to do it either. It's all about the stage of life that you're in, what you value, what you find rewarding, what you find fulfilling. And frankly, it's about the mother. That, that's a good, the, the mom is going to be a bigger challenge than the kid. That's what a lot of men don't understand is <laughs> that what happens is they date <laughs> Oh, she's the first woman to return my calls and we have sex. Therefore, you have a kid with her and then they get divorced and they're on the Internet telling you how bad all the women are and how terrible it is. And they never should have had kids. And it's like, no, you were a horny guy who had a little bit of attention given to you and then you gave up your whole life. That's, you're not even remotely in my world. You're not remotely in the realm of what matters. So I always tell guys, if you think you want kids, you're dating the mother of your children and the grandparents. So if there's a problem, you, cause you want to talk about being alpha, alpha is much less about dating a lot of women and more about, can you just say, Hey, this is an attractive woman. I like her, but her grandpa, her parents are a mess and I don't want them around my kid because that would just be bad. And then saying, sorry, I think you're a good person, but we just can't do this. Right. That that's more how you have to look at it is, this is going to be the mother. Like I said this, you're at, you're at my wedding. I said this to, you know, one of the reasons I married Sean and people were kind of mortified. The people who didn't know me, if it's your first time meeting Cerno, 
I don't give off the best impression, I think, <laughs> because I'm very authentic and truthful. <laughs> and it takes a while, it takes a while to like me. And I said at the wedding, yeah, one of the reasons that, you know, I married Sean is because I knew her grandparents were great people and that they would be heavily involved with, with kids. And people were like, oh, that, you know, you're, cause you're supposed to just say, oh, pure love. I found my honey boo and blah, 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 blah. But really it's no, I obviously was lover, obviously, but it, it, you have to look at it more. The child that you're going to bring in this world. Are you giving the child the best possibility of having a good life? You're marrying into a family. It's that traditional values in, in a way. That's why there's been a lot of studies on arranged marriages and it looks like on balance, people tend to have better relationships. Well, why? Because if the parents are choosing, choosing, but if the parents hate each other, great. They're not going to choose to couple the, the people. The parents are going to go their own ways. So then you're the parents are more compatible. And then if the parents are compatible, chances are the kids will have a better chance of, of being compatible. And then you learn that a marriage – is less about love and it's more about compatibility. It's more about shared values. You're going to wake up next to this person every day for many, many years. Do you like the person you're waking up to? Or does the person drive you crazy? Or does the person have emotional problems or this and that? So I don't really care. I was telling men, I don't care if you're in love. Yeah, love is nice. You should have both if you can. It's much more about do you have shared values? Do you have, are you compatible? Can you just kind of like hang out? One person's doing her thing because a lot of people can't. There are a lot of women, and I'm sure men too, but just from my perspective, who they can't just like let you be on your own. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, we don't talk enough. You're just ignoring me. And they're like ignoring ignoring you? What do you you're a human being. What do you mean you're being ignored? You can't be be in your own for three hours. Are you are you out of your mind? What what are you even talking about, right? So if if that's the kind of energy you're getting. You have a kid, you're in for the long haul, so you better be careful.